we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. The topic before us this morning is the security of the believer. Are you a believer? Are you a believer? Yes, we are believers. The security of the believer. The test is Romans chapter 8, verses 29 and 30. For whom he did predestine, for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Praise the Lord. If you look at... Um, the passage we just read, we can draw a conclusion that before we were born, God knew us. He foreknew us. And we did not hear the gospel of Jesus Christ by mistake. It was his own plan to make us a part of the kingdom. God told Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you and I have ordained you as a prophet. Even while Jeremiah was in the womb of his mother, God knew that a prophet is there and he had been ordained. Will someone say that those who are in the world who have not been called or who are not believers today, have they not been called? Is God partial? That is not what the scripture is saying. Because even the Jesus told us that the message of the kingdom shall go to the ends of the world. In one way or the other, God brings the gospel to people. They either accept it or reject it. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. But our attention today we are concentrating it on the security of the believer. What is security? According to Miriam Webster Dictionary, security is the state of being protected or safe from harm. Things done to make people or places safe. The quality or state of being secure. As, for instance, freedom from danger, it means safety. A believer is someone who has accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior through faith and has repented, is conformed to the image of the Son of God. And he did not end there. person is baptized after repentance and also the person continues in the doctrine of the kingdom. So it goes beyond, a believer goes beyond somebody who prays the sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin. Come into my heart. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. It goes beyond that. That is just the beginning of becoming a believer. Today, there are many people who call themselves believers, but they don't live like believers. The book of James Make us to understand that faith without work is what? If we say we have faith that we are children of God, but we don't walk, 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 live as believers, are we still believers? No, Jesus said it is not the one who says, Lord, Lord, that we enter the kingdom of God, but the one who does the will of who? The will of my Father. Now, this security of the believer, I want to see it from two perspectives. Number one, we have the security on earth and the security of eternal life. 
Security on earth, I also want to see it from two perspectives. Number one, deliverance from danger. Deliverance from attack. God protecting our lives and making sure that we don't fall into temptation. Uh, things that would cause us to lose our properties or lose our lives. Because of that, God sends his angels to protect us, to bear us with their hands, lest we strike our feet against any stone. That stone means obstacle. Also, Psalm 34 tells us that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. So this is the protection of our lives. Another part of this protection, security, too, is being kept by the power of God from falling from the faith. God keeps us. Those he calls, he also keeps. He keeps us from falling away. That is why Jude, Jude verse 24, says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy. Jude 1 24. So, God, the security of the believer, is God protects us physically on earth, protects us from falling away into error. Sometimes we have some dreams, and God rebukes us. My son, this thing you are doing is wrong. Uh, sometimes it could go as far as some of the uh, societies, uh, committees we have joined, social clubs. We join probably ignorantly. And as people go inside the mall, they will not discover that it is not just a social club, but it is a cult, an occultic group. God wants his children, even in the dream, have had ceaseless dreams like that. In fact, I shared one like that here some years ago on this same pupit that I had a dream and the Lord was warning me that, Hosanna, you, this thing is not small. If you fail to change, I will cast you into hell. That I will not change my standard because of you. This is how God treats us and makes sure that we are conformed to the image of Christ. He keeps us from falling away from the faith. Praise the Lord. Then, security unto eternal life. Security unto eternal life. He makes sure God gives us the free gift of salvation. Salvation is just the work of God. We have nothing to do to get this gift from God. It is a gift from God. All we need to do is just believe in our hearts. And after we receive this gift, we keep the garment of salvation pure without spot and wrinkle. And in case we have any spot on it, immediately we notice, we dip it into the blood of a lamp, wash it, so that when the Lord will come back, he will meet us pure. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. As believers, there are some things we do. And we commonize them. In fact, there are many things that a lot of churches celebrate today that are against the will of God. Some of the things, even some people see as nothing, God hates them. For instance, if we, I hope we know that we are the image of God, that we are created after God's own image, after his own likeness. Anything you do to that body that alters that image can land you into hell. Is that true? God is so jealous. You look at the Bible, Old Testament, there are so many laws. You don't draw tattoo upon your body. There are things you don't do to yourself. But today, you see a lot of people, the way they paint their face, some even look like aliens. Some look like demons. Some introduce themselves Different, different, different things into themselves. And when you see some human beings, you ask yourself, is this the image of God? So, at regular intervals, God visits us, looks at our lives, and wants us. This thing you are doing is not good. This thing, 
And when God sees a temptation that is beyond us, he does not allow it to come our way. Praise the Lord. When Jesus saw Peter, he told Peter, 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 Satan has asked. He requested to save you, to filter you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. I have prayed. Jesus, the thing did not happen that same moment. Jesus had the request of Satan. Asking to tempt Peter. And the temptation would lead to his downfall. But Jesus saw the temptation and prayed he interceded for Peter. And the Bible says that the Spirit of God intercedes for us. This is part of the security of the believer. He intercedes for us. There are unseen battles that we don't see. There are some temptations when they are coming our way. God makes sure he fights for us. If, even without us knowing. Praise the Lord. Shout a big hallelujah. This security of the believer. There are different theological interpretations. Some are very heretical. Apostate doctrines. Some are in line. One of the heretical ones is once saved, always saved. And these people look at this verse critically. Um, chapter uh, Romans chapter 6. Uh, Romans chapter 8, which we have read. The, the last verse there, 39. No height, no depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus, which is, is in, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. They say that once you are saved, once you are a believer, you are always saved. And that nothing on earth or in heaven can separate you from God. It doesn't matter how you live anymore. Once you are saved, you are always saved. It looks like one of the doctrines in the, of the early church, of the Roman Catholic Church, before uh, believers protested. In fact, Martin Luther took it upon himself to fight that heretical doctrine. And the doctrine was a sense of indulgence. Um, when they were raising money to carry out numerous projects in the church, in the second century, the church then, they came out with a very coded plan that in case you are living in sin, uh, we could make you pay some amount of money so that uh, we pronounce forgiveness upon you. And when we pronounce the forgiveness, some evil issue certificates. And when some people have the certificate of indulgence, they could go and drink and live their lives, womanize, rob, and so long as they have the certificate and renew it, they believe that when they die, they will fly straight to heaven or go to purgatory. And uh, their punishment will just be small. After some years or some time, they will just fly to heaven. Today, me, I meet with a lot of people like that online. When you talk about sin and want people against the danger of hell, they will tell you once you have confessed Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, there is nothing on earth or in heaven that can make you to fall again. That Christians cannot go to hell. Christians cannot fall. Is that true? Is that true? If it is true, then let us eat and drink. Because there is no need to wash again. Jesus said, wash. Because you do not know when your master will come back. In fact, the parable of the ten virgins. Were they not virgins? They were virgins. The five, the foolish five virgins, they were still virgins. They never slept. In fact, they were qualified. They 
were qualified. They were believers like you and I. But the only thing they did was that as at the return of the master, they were not prepared. They were sleeping. Probably engaging in quarrel. Probably, you know, the Bible says that your light should always shine. So that when people see you, they give glory to who? Your father who is in heaven. As at that time, their lights were not shining. They went to look for all. And it was that time that the master came. Where was the door open for them? In fact, they screamed and cried, Lord, we are still virgins. We have kept ourselves up to this moment. The Lord said, go, I do not know you. We can't open for you. As at when the door was opened, you were not ready. Some people believe that it doesn't matter. Once you are a believer, you cannot fall. And we have men of God who are propelling this doctrine. They are pushing it with all force. People believe. And some of this repentance, it is Lord Jesus coming to my heart. The repentance does not affect the bad jobs they do. That prayer they pray, the acceptance of Jesus does not change anything in their lives. When somebody that is in the world receives Christ, their characters will change. They will now be conformed. It does not happen in a single day. But over time, people will not be noticing that you no longer drink alcohol with them. You no longer go to the club and stay late at night. You no longer quarrel because the Bible says the servant of the Lord must not quarrel. You no longer do your dubious business. Like Matthew, who resigned from being a tax collector. And even Zacchaeus, after his resignation from sin, he told Jesus, he stood up and said, Master, Jesus, from today, I have repented. And if I had collected anything wrongly, I'm going to refund it fourfold. Restitution. Many of these people, they just say, uh, have you given your life to Christ? In fact, I watched uh, one of these churches, one of the biggest churches in Nigeria. I was watching their cable, and some young men and young uh, females, they went out for evangelism, inviting people. And anybody they meet, they will ask, are you a believer? Say yes or no. Say, um, are you born again? In fact, they were asking, are you born again? If the person says yes, he said, okay, we are inviting you for our program. But the person says, no, I'm not born again. Say why? You can be born again now. Okay, just say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me my sins. In fact, some of them, they did not say, forgive me my sins. They did not say, say, I have repented, I have forsaken my evil way. Nothing like that. And after that short prayer, they said, congratulations, you have been born again. Is it true? They are just saying a prayer. The things you stole, they are still with you. The number of girlfriends, people's husbands, they are still there. The person goes back to the same lifestyle. But some men of God, we ask you, have you ever said the sinner's prayer before? They said, uh, I think I said the prayer some time ago. He said, no problem. You said it and you believe. Say, you believe. Say, yes. No problem. You are saved. When Jesus comes, you go with him. People's minds are be poisoned. In fact, me, it is not every preacher I listen to. I cannot eat good food. And eat soured food on top. A lot of times, some people climb their pulpit, they poison the hearts of people against Jesus Christ. They have, from that moment, they have itching ear. They don't want to hear the truth again. But may the Lord deliver us from such doctrines in Jesus' name. Let's look at John chapter 15. John 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my father is a husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, purgeth it, 
that it may bring forth more, more works, more fruits. Look at verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Now pay a closer look at verse 6. If a man abides in me, he is cast forth. Okay, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. That if a believer that has once received the truth, if they turn away from the truth and start living their old life, and lost after the things of this world. Jesus said, these ones are cut off. Jesus was addressing the disciples here. He called the disciples the branches. And himself, himself the vine. He said, the day you fall and you start living your old life, you will be cut off. And at the end of the world, you will dry up. Being cut off means that the Holy Spirit that seals you as God's own will be taken away from you. And you will no longer receive energy, spiritual strength to run the race. And when that broken relationship takes place, the branch dries up. And at the end, when Jesus will separate the sheep from the goats, those dried ones will be cast into where? To fire. And they will be crying, Lord, Lord, but we preach in your name. We did miracles in your name. And the Lord will tell them, I helped you with my spirit. I called you to myself. You did not hear. Even when you see the poor on the street, you said, once saved, always saved, and you never helped them. You see those who have no clothes, those people by your door, poor people, and it was raining. You never took them in as strangers. Even in prison, they told you that some of your fellow Christians are in prison because they preach the truth. You said, no, I can't visit them. I can't endanger my life. And you feared, you shrink your life. And not use it to face death for my sake. So, go to the outer darkness prepared for you. Prepared for Satan and his angels. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. How many of us are in Christ? Christianity is not by human strength. If you are in Christ, Jesus will keep you. I remember when I made my second resolution to follow Christ. I first gave my life to Christ when I was about 14, 15 years old. But after some years, I looked back. And then, when I was coming back to God, when I was having the final conviction, each time I knew that to pray, I would be seeing things that would drag me away and I would be crying. I said, God, I want to follow you, but I don't have strength to. God, I want to follow you, but I don't have strength. I will look at my back. People, the world, trying to take me away from God. But I tell you, God has threatened me to today, and I have not fallen. That was when I was in Genesis 1. I have not fallen. Even when I'm weak, and I fall into sin, he quickens me. My son, get up, wash your clothes, and move. How are you running your Christian life? God has a plan for us. He has secured eternity for us. But even though nothing in heaven, not in the world, or under the world can take us from the God, we can choose to disobey God. We can resolve within ourselves that God, I'm not going to follow you again. 
And even when church sends committee to us to beg us, please come to church, leave that court, leave that witchcraft, leave that uh, arm robbery, we could, we, because we are moral beings, we could tell them that, no, I don't need God again. Or I want to go to a church where I can wear anything and live my life anyhow I want to live it. May God Almighty keep us by his own power. Let us be on our feet. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.